Here's an interesting question. Why are objects colored the way they are? Why is a banana yellow and an apple red? Sunlight is made of a spectrum of colors, and that's why you see rainbows, because the water after a rainstorm can create a separating effect that allows you to see all the colors of light within sunlight separately. And when this multicolored sunlight shines onto the earth, objects can do three things with it. They can either reflect the light, transmit the light, or absorb the light. So clear objects would transmit the light, like a piece of glass. The light just shines through it without affecting the glass. Solid objects either absorb or reflect the light. And it's the reflected light that shows up on the surface of an object. So a banana is yellow because it absorbs all the colors but yellow. It reflects yellow. And an apple is red because it absorbs all the colors but red. This may seem a little counterintuitive because you, you would think that the object would show the color that it absorbs. But think of a mirror. A mirror reflects images by reflecting the light that's sent to it. It doesn't absorb that light. So we can apply this to plants. Plants are green because they absorb all the colors but green. And they do this because there are certain pigments found in plants that have specific absorption spectrums that allow them to absorb all colors but green. So this is an absorption spectrum. It refers to a chart like this. And you see that down on the bottom here, all the colors are shown, and then the pigments are sort of graphed out in these peaks and valleys. And what this means, the higher the peak is, the more color that's um, being absorbed from this particular part of the visible um, light spectrum. So you can see that chlorophyll B absorbs a lot of violet and indigo. So what does this mean? These pigments absorb these, light, uh, these colors, but what does it exactly do? Well, the pigments found in plants are more specifically called photosynthetic pigments, and they're able to utilize the energy in the light that they absorb to set photosynthetic processes in motion. So they aren't just giving plants their color. They're also giving plants their energy, and that's why in photosynthesis you need light. So this absorption spectrum shows the three common photosynthetic pigments found in plants, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. You can see um, that chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B absorb everything but green. So this is like the section for green, and there's a huge valley in the graph of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, and that is what makes them green because they absorb everything but green. And carotenoids are generally um, orange, red, or yellow. So that's about like from here to here. And you can see that carotenoids don't even register once they get down to the yellows, oranges, and reds. And that's because they're absorbing all the colors but those colors that they reflect. And you can remember that carotenoids are what give carrots their orange color and use that trick to remember the color of carotenoids. So carotenoids, carrots, orange, orange, red, yellow. Only the green pigment, chlorophyll A, actually participates directly in the light reactions. The other two, chlorophyll B and carotenoids, are known as accessory pigments or antennae pigments because they assist photosynthesis by capturing light energy and passing it over to the chlorophyll A. In this way, the pigments work together to generate energy for initiating photosynthesis.